Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am going to be filming a new cohort of videos and today we are going to start with Math Lit 2023 Paper 1 for the GDE, right? So let's now go through our instructions, right? If you are um, new to my channel, um, you won't know this, but I always say to my um, students on my channel, I say to them, no, you need to look at your instructions, right? Because they give you a bit of steer as to where you need to focus. So, for example, it will tell you whether there's an addendum, right? Make sure you have that addendum. I've got my addendum next to me, right? If you don't, ask your invigilator, right? Your addendum, you have to use it to answer a number of questions. It tells you which questions. Make sure you start each question on a new page. Students always forget this. Then, make sure that you only round off your final answers. So don't round off while you're working. And um, make sure that you include your measurements in your answers. You can lose marks if you don't. And then always make sure to read neatly, well, to write neatly and legibly, okay? Let's go into the first question of this paper. Okay, first question. Generally not a difficult one, but there are places, obviously, that you can trip up if you're not reading carefully. So let's just go through it together. Spotify is a legal way to listen to music using the internet. There's lots of illegal ways, right? But it's a legal way. It is also referred to as a streaming music, as streaming music online. Table one below shows different categories of users and items streamed for three different sessions, A, B, and C, on 18 February 2023 using the Spotify mobile app. App means application. Now, I always say to my students, when you see a piece of information, don't stress about it, okay? Don't be like, oh, I need to now spend ages understanding this. Remember, the questions help you understand the information given because it tells you where to focus, right? So that's what I want you to do here is I want you to focus on your questions, okay? Obviously, we need to understand the table and that there's categories, there's sessions, but we'll kind of get familiar with it as we answer our questions. Use table one above. So the answer the questions that follow. So 1.1.1, state whether the values used for the different categories in the table, so these categories here, are discrete or continuous. Now, this obviously calls into question whether we understand what discrete and continuous means. So discrete means it can only take on a set number, right, in a specific interval of a number. So for example, you can be in grade 10 or 11 or 12. You can't be in grade 10 and a half, 11 and a half, okay? That's what discrete is. You can only take on specific numbers. Continuous means you can take on any value in an interval, right? So let's say, for example, your weight. You can be 63.1 kgs or you could be 63.2 uh, kgs. That's continuous. You can take on any value but in a specific range, okay? So here, let's look at this table. It has users, right? It has songs and it has artists and albums, right? You can't have half a user. You can't have half a song. You can't have half a music artist or half an album. It either is an album or an artist or a user or it's not, right? So in this case, it is discrete. So let's go and write this out. Remember, we're starting each question on a new page. So here's question one. Okay, so you say question one, 1.1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1, and you just say discrete, right? Sometimes what students do here, and I'll warn you against this, is they try to explain why it's discrete. The question doesn't ask that. It just says, is it discrete or continuous? State and move on. 1.1.2. The number of music albums streamed during session B was 12929939. Seems like his phone number. <laughs> but then the question says, write down this number in words without using numerals. So basically, we don't want numbers up in here. We want you to write that out in full, okay? Now, this just shows, well, what they're testing is that you know your decimals, your hundreds, uh, well, your tens, your um, hundreds, your thousands, your millions, etc. Okay, so this is 12 million because there's six decimal, six um, units after it or six numbers after it. And then, so it's 12 million, 929,939. So let's write that out, okay? So we have 12 million. 12 million, um, 929,000, 
okay? Um, nine hundred and thirty nine. Okay, so do you see that there's no numbers there, right? When I say no numbers, there's no digits. I've written it all out in words. Two marks, perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The next one says, identify the session during which the second largest number of music artists were listened to. Okay, so we're looking at artists. So we're over here. We have 6089, 6089, 6089. So they all start at 6089. So we're only looking at the last three numbers of each. We can see that that's the smallest, that's the largest, and that's the second largest or the middle number. The question asks for the second largest. So the second largest, we don't have to write the number. We just have to write the session. So what is it? Session B. Okay. You see what students do here is they don't read. And so then they write, for example, they'll write the number. And it's like, well, no, that wasn't what was asked for. What was asked for was the session. So just be careful. Calculate the increase in the number of songs, important, streamed over the three sessions. Okay. So here's the number of songs. We can see that from session A, it went up to session B and went up to session C. So actually, all we want is the difference between session C and session A. So we just say here, 88706141 minus 88704344. Okay, make sure that you have your calculator on hand, right? Pop this in. So it is 88706141. I keep thinking this is like a phone number. 88704344. The difference is 1797 songs. Okay, now you could be saying, oh, do I really have to put songs in? Well, it's technically units, right? And so I would be as specific as possible because it asked you to, in your instructions in the beginning, it was like, please use units. So I'm just following instructions. Let's look at the last question here. Determined, determine as a unit ratio, right? A unit ratio means in the form one to something. They didn't even have to put in this little bit here. You should know that a unit ratio is always one to something, right? the number of paid users, okay, to the number of free users during session A. So let's go look. There's paid users, there are free users in session A. So let's write that. So 690160, that's from there, to 8120031, okay? Paid to free. Wonderful. Now it wants us to write it as a unit ratio. So we can't just be up in here making up our own things, right? So what do I have to do to that to get to one? Well, I have to divide it by itself. Okay. But remember, in a ratio, what did I do to the one side? Mm -mm -mm, I have to be doing to the other side. That is a rule, right? You can't just be changing things. So I say 8120031 divided by 690160. Well, oh, be careful you type incorrectly. It's a common error. And you just say to 11.765 dot, 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 right? It didn't say how many decimal places, but in general, right, it's to two decimal places. If we go look at the instructions, let me see if there's anything in the instructions around rounding off. Um, it didn't say. So what's generally appropriate, right, is two decimal places. That's generally acceptable. So we have for the first decimal place being seven, we want to round off to the second decimal place. So we always look at the third decimal. If it is five or above, we round this decimal up. So our final answer would be that. Okay, remember you're rounding off. If this was four or below, we would have just left it at six. Okay, that's us done with the first question. Let's continue with the paper.